and uh, got you on looking at the left scope here. I'm going to change a few things on our radar. I'm changing the uh, radar channel target histories to two and the PRF to auto. Bandit 06, uh, clearance available, Vice Red copy. Bandit 6, ready copy. Bandit 6, good, whiskey 291, two of two departure, mouse transition, tango 03 rooting, maintain 2000, departure on 363 decimal one, you squawk 4722. Copy all, 4722. Roger, that good flight. Navy break, Navy November July 436, okay. clearance available. That was the clearance guy, 436, ready to copy. Julie 436, okay. you're cleared to bar via Julie 5 departure, Imperial Transition. Put the information down at the bottom of the HUD there. We're looking through the HUD now, and uh, you can see kind of what I'm doing here. Change the radio to button four so we don't have to listen to that guy. He just told me my squawk was uh, 4722, so I'm going to punch that in here. And changing a few other things. COM2, the VHF radio, I'll change to 51, 52. I'm going to list page, put the bingo in for 1,800 pounds. That means I'll get a fuel light at 1,800 pounds of gas, and I'll know that uh, I need to go home. List six, see how my alignment's coming along. It's flashing at me, so it's ready. So I'll go ahead and take that. And that shows you my latitude and longitude there and the altitude, so the airplane knows exactly where it's at. And uh, wherever I go, it can tell me how to get back here, hopefully. And uh, change a few other things here. Let's go over to the right side here. Go to the Smiths page, or Storage Management. Get an inventory. We see you don't have anything loaded, so I'll uh, I'll load a couple fictitious missiles just in so I can uh, practice them. And you see, I got a missile on that station. Then we'll go to this one. Put in a different kind of missile. And now I got a missile on uh, each wing tip. Go to the rack stay and make sure I don't have any any uh, loading racks loaded because I don't want them. And now the inventory. Now back up to the front. Going to air to air mode and setting up my radar so I have it work. Actually, I'll put you on the right side. You can see what I'm doing over there. And this is the missiles for whatever uh, I want to name 9P on uh, when I go to the dogfight mode. And I got snapshot LCOS. And the other one, I want AIM-9 MICA. I can uh, cool the missile there, and I want it slaved to the uh, radar line of sight, so I'll leave it where it's set there. And on this station, I'll uh, go to the AIM-9P also. Okay, just about ready to taxi. And uh, I'll be back in a minute. And I'll explain a few things here. The left side is airspeed. You can see the C stands for calibrated airspeed. And I'll explain that later. It's at the zero, zero right now because I'm not going fast. On the right side, the altitude. I'm at 500 and oh, a little over 20 feet. And that shows you uh, the altitude. The pitch line's up there. The uh, little tadpole's right in the middle of uh, the line that goes straight across. The line is the horizon, and the tadpole that's in the middle will go up and down, and that shows where the airplane's going. And, of course, the line's on the top and the bottom, five and five, or five degrees nose up and five degrees nose down. And the other little thing pointing backwards is the uh, uh, steering to the steer point. It shows me that uh, i got to turn around and go the other way to go to steer point 20. I know what steer point I got selected because it's at the bottom right hand, at 000 to 20, which means uh, zero miles to 20. And I'll call for takeoff. Be ready in a minute. You're switching uh, to departure control and taking the runway. And I'll be doing an afterburner takeoff here. You'll be able to see the airspeed come up rather quickly. Okay, I'll sit. Running up a little bit. Checking the flight controls. I can see them all from here, which is nice. All pressured, everything looks good, so here we go. And plugging the afterburner now. It's staging good. And the airspeed on the left side, you can see how it comes up rather quickly. And 140 knots, I'll rotate. And the gear's coming up. And there's the tadpole showing you how high up I'm going, two and a half degrees. Gear's up safely. Look for 300 miles an hour now. Departure Bandit 6, airborne mouse. Bandit 6, sending a departure control rate of contact, maintain 2,000. Bandit 6, 2,000. And he told me to maintain 2,000. I'm supposed to be at 325 knots. 325 and climbing.
And approaching 1500. Registry 710, San Diego approach. Good morning. When able, proceed direct Mount Soledad in our left traffic runway 28 for Montgomery. And turning left to heading at 280. There's 2,000 feet. So I'll bring the little tadpole down to the horizon. And I'll hold me right there. You can see the uh, La Jolla golf course going underneath us here. Probably can't see it too good on the hood. But uh, we're going right over Torrey Pines here in just a second. So that's all there is to take off. Be back in a minute. A target. Now look through the little diamond on the HUD. There's a diamond. You see that little black dot in the middle? Well, that's uh, traffic out there at uh, 1,000 feet. I can tell his altitude by the one over there, and he's at uh, five miles now. And a departure calls me to turn left at seven miles, so I'll do that. To heading at 253. Okay, some more symbology. A little thing up at the top. Shows a 2-9 and a long arrow. That's pointing to the guy I have my radar contact on. And uh, it's a helicopter. Actually, you can't see him from here because he's 35 degrees right of the nose. But it's the uh, twin rotor helicopter. Departure Bandit 6 for hire. Bandit 6, fly heading 230, Vector Whiskey 291. Make sure your transponder's on. I'm not getting it. We'll go. I fired about three miles. Bandit 6. And I'm at still at 2,000 feet, slightly under, you can see. And uh, trying to get to a higher altitude. Back to the radar scope. I can run the range out and see if I can find somebody else. There's a bunch of people. Bandit 6, climb, maintain 1 4,000. Bandit 6, out of 2 for 1 4,000. So, there's your speed left side. Plug an afterburner. And uh, you can see I'm at 400 knots and accelerating, going 45 degrees nose up. And there's the altitude on the right side. You can see it climbs rather rapidly. And four and a quarter now. Bandit 6, you're rodent. Uh, Bandit 6 is on a mouse. And I'm going to pull out afterburner so I can make this 14,000 foot restriction. And I uh, went over it about 20 feet, but not too bad. Yes, sir. 10, 11, San Diego Departure Control, radar contact. Climb and maintain 10,000. And I just realized I didn't show you all that on the... Uh, Bandit 4, 6 3, is 8 miles, Whiskey 291, radar service so over there. Clear the TCA, contact Beaver. Bandit 6, switching Beaver. And we're back on the head now at 14,000 feet. And I got to talk to some people. Be back in a second. 40 miles. It's, uh... See if we can see him with the ground map. I'll put you on the left side. There's a target there. Can lock him up. He's at uh, 12,000 feet. He's headed uh, 260. Bandit 6 radar contact 10 miles east of Whiskey DME 6 stay altitude. Bandit 6 level at 14. Bandit 6, Roger, maintain VFR. Reporting frequency changes. Would you like a beaver discrete? Uh, yes, I'd like a discrete, please. Bandit 6, use beaver discrete 344.1 RTB 266.9. Under switching 344.1. Okay, let's uh, go out of air mode to uh, ground map. I'll raise the scale out to 80 miles. We'll see if we can see this island out here. And there it is. And that's the island of San Clemente right in the middle of the scope. So I can tell it's... Uh, just inside 40 miles, actually, uh, the end of the island's at 40 miles now. And that's how a uh, ground map works. And back to the air mode. See how many targets we got out here. And here's the closest one. And he's 16 left in the nose at 6,000 feet. And back to the HUD. You can see he's uh, left of the nose down at the bottom there. We'll go, we won't mess with him right now. And box, it just shows up on the left side there. He's inside that box, but because he's uh, 15 miles away, you can't see him yet. But that's how you'd find him, continue to look in the box. And now I'm in an air-to-air -air mode. You can see that on the bottom left hand. It says AAM, air-to-air -air mode. And it gives me weapon symbology for whatever weapons I have selected. Unfortunately, I don't have any on here today. Now I'm in the dogfight mode, if I wanted to gun him. And you could probably just start seeing the island we looked at on ground map a little earlier.
supersonic run. I'm in 350 knots, passing 26,500 feet, which is on the right side. And again, uh, that airspeed there is calibrated airspeed, which is uh, kind of strange thing to explain, but there's true airspeed, so that's what I'm uh, really going. And there's ground speed. That's how fast I'm going across the ground. So I'm going 450 knots across the ground, but my airspeed's only indicating 325, and that's because the air's thin and there's less molecules impacting my speed checker thing. And uh, so it doesn't seem like I'm going uh, very fast, but I'm actually going uh, 425 ground speed, which is corrected for winds, and 475 through the air. That's my mock, so that's uh, how fast I'm going in mock speed, or the, relative to the speed of sound. We're at 38,000 now. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll plug the afterburner here. And uh, get up some speed. Because we're in altitude, the acceleration isn't as rapid. But you can see the 0.8 mock down there just now. Press the nose down a little bit. Marine uniform, uniform 44, Los Angeles Center on guard. If you hear me, I did. Okay, there's Mach 1, so we're supersonic right now. Anyone below us would probably not be happy. But fortunately, there's Marine uniform, no below uniform 44, I did observe. Uh, try Los Angeles Center frequency. Get rid of that guy. Turn listening to him. Okay, we're doing 1.13 Moxie. It says 400 airspeed there, but let's go to ground speed again and see how fast we're going. Okay, we're going almost uh, 700 miles an hour now. And we'll climb it up a little bit. And we're doing 1.3 Mach. Calibrated airspeed, let's look at that, or excuse me, uh, this is true airspeed, so I'm doing uh, just about 800 miles an hour. Yeah, at 1.4 Mach. I'm doing some pretty good conning right now. You can't see it out the front, but out the back, I'm leaving a trail just like the airliners do. Okay, we're at 43,000, and we're doing one and a half times the speed of sound. And we'll just continue to accelerate a little bit. Here's 900 miles an hour. Nine hundred and fifty miles an hour. And one point seven Mach, so one point seven times the speed of sound. And for all you that ever wanted to do a thousand miles an hour, there's a thousand miles an hour. Thousand and fifty and one point eight five Mach. And uh, just about Mach two here. And there's Mach 2 at 1,150 miles an hour, and I think that's about as fast as I care to go. So pulling out, and let's do some turn back in. Okay, we're 702, traffic closing at 5 o'clock, 2 miles westbound, H3, 400 feet. 702. Okay, up in the top left-hand corner there, it shows G. I'm pulling 5 Gs right now. And down at the bottom, it shows how many Gs I've pulled all day. So there was 6.5 G, 6.6 .6 actually. And you can see at the bottom it stays on there and so I know how many I pulled all day. In case I pull too many when I get home, I can tell maintenance and they can uh, check the air airplane to make sure I didn't bend anything. Go to 80 miles is right there. And this little thing I'm moving around right here in a circle is uh, 
it shows the altitude of the range. So since I'm halfway up the scope right now, at 40 miles, I'm looking from 14,000 feet to 43,000 feet, and there's a target right there. Coming in and out. He might be low, so I can run the antenna down. Looks like it's frozen right now. Let me see if I can unlock it in here. On the scale back up. Yeah, and that little thing right there is the steer point. That's the steer point I have selected. But it's a, uh, that's where we'll go when we go home. We'll go to that little spot in the sky. Now let's go up the hood again and do some maneuvering. We're still at uh, 40,000 feet, which is pretty high. At uh, 300 indicated, which is uh, 560 miles an hour. Uh, actually, that's not, so it's probably close to a little over 600 miles an hour. And we usually fly around and calibrate it. So let's uh, turn upside down and go down. I'm pointed right at the ground now, four and a half G's, and you can see the altitude going down over there. You can roll it around, point back to where we want to go. And there is a seven and a half G pull there. It's hard to talk when I'm doing that. And uh, I'm just out on a warm-up hop, so I need to do some acrobatics here. Kind of warm my body back up. And now I'm going below 20,000, a little cloud layer there. And there's the island in front of me. I've got a guy on the radar here that I'm looking at. Actually, there's two of them flying in a close formation, so I'll lock them up. Pull over to them, and they're in the diamond there at 25 miles. So I won't be able to see them. But they're in there doing uh, 0.95 miles, so I better slow down a little bit. We'll go over here and uh, see what's happening. Upside down. All right side up. There's a little boat out in old bay over there. The San Clemente Islands, about uh, 80 miles from Miramar. Well, let's see how far I am from home here. So you look in the right-hand corner there, all at the bottom. I'll put in uh, steer point 20, which is base. You see, I'm 64 miles from steer point 20. If I come out of this mode and into the nav mode, it'll take me eight minutes and 49 and 54, five, six seconds to get there. And uh, the steering thing up on the right, right on the line now, is pointing back towards the base. So I need to come right a long ways to get to it. And that's how all that stuff works. We'll go ahead and put steer point eight back in. And uh, see what's happening on the island down here. Not a whole lot, it looks like. And on the right side, you can see it, we're at 4,000 feet. We're good from Sutton 02, traffic 12 o'clock, three miles westbound, H3, 400 feet. 702, looking. 2,000 feet now, and uh, doing about 400 miles an hour. There's some fishing boats here. They love it when we do this, I'm sure. 702, Tally Hill. And you can see the fishing boats down there. And I can't go much lower than this, because I'll really piss them off. And this is what they love. There's 350, we'll plug a little afterburner. Go over this boat. And pull up. That's affirmative. Straight up into the vertical. Yeah, we're accelerating in the vertical at uh, 400 miles an hour. That's an 8,000 feet. And I'm uh, the 730 traffic 12 o'clock, 5 miles, northeast sound, F-18, 10,000, IFR. And back over the top. 730, look. At 15,000 feet. Give him something to talk about when he goes home today. 20 miles, he's headed, a uh, little thing points to where he's headed, so... He's headed to uh, 210, and uh, well, let's go back to the HUD. You can just now see him in there. Must be something big, probably an E2 or something, because normally you can't see a fighter size at 17 and a half miles. And we'll go kind of check him out here. Of 
clear up the scope a little bit. That's Griffin 702, Beaver. 7070. Beaver 702. Beaver, Red Griffin, 702, Beaver. Beaver, Red Griffin, 702. People, people are Beaver, calling. Red Griffin, 702, copy loud, clear, go ahead. Beaver. Red Griffin, 702, Beaver. Go ahead, Beaver, read you loud and clear. Okay, as I request, request you call it primary. And it's an airliner where you don't want to go too close to him, so we'll head on back. Then it's six boundary advisory, five miles from the north west boundary, we'll get you. That's uh, that line there is called a VSL mode, and I got to put somebody on that line to lock them up. Unfortunately, there's no one out here to, to lock up, but that's how it worked. Another mode I have is called uh, uh, just escape me for a minute. But I can move this little ball around, and the radar looks in that direction. So if I think a guy's in that quadrant, I'll go to there, and it'll lock him up. Another mode I got is called boresight, and basically I got to put somebody in that little cross. If you imagine lines uh, covering that like a box. I put him in there up to 10 miles and lock him up also. But uh, again, there's no one within 10 miles. And I can go back to my scope over here. And there's somebody out a little ways. Looks about 18 miles. And he is 17 miles at 14,000 feet. NG turn. Well, we'll do it now. 7.30, we're out here doing uh, ASW on top of the island here, low below 3,000.